I burn my lips. <laughs> oh, yum. Yeah? Oh, it's delicious. Okay, we're gonna strain that. We're gonna get this. Ah! Ah, <laughs> And action. Let's have a look. We've got the broth. Mmm. Mm. Oh my god. All right. Mmm. That reminds me of lunch at my grandmother's place. So Yoli, what does cofido mean for you? Oh, uh, cofido means cold winter months. Uh, it means chimney. It means the warmth of the lovely hot soup. It also means overeating. It also means feeling bad afterwards because you just ate too many chickpeas. Cocido is just a magical dish and it reminds me of this time we went to Segovia in winter, as you say, to a friend's house and he cooked this massive cocido, the wine we oh, had with so it, the, the guindillas that his grandmother had pickled. It was amazing. It's a dish that is so evocative and it's a dish that I'm gonna cook for the first time. This weekend we're gonna make cocido. It's gonna be amazing. And it's also the first time that we're gonna make a cooking video in our new kitchen. Ole de verdad. Let's go into the kitchen now because I also want to explain to everyone why the hell we're making cocido on the 30th of August. Let's go. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering too. Guys, and just huddle up for a sec. If you don't know what this cocido thing is, what the hell are you talking about? It is the classic Madrid stew. It is the stew that Madrileños adore, that they must have, it's in their veins. And it's got everything in it. Vegetables, meat, the whole kit and caboodle. That's what a cocido is. And you need to have it once in your life. So guys, Stews are easy and hard at the same time. I, I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but this is really up leveling for me and I'm a little bit nervous. So I've been doing my research and I started with my recipe books. I've been reading the different cocido recipes. You know, do I bone marrow this, that, and the other? I've also been watching YouTube videos to try and get a handle of the different ways of doing it. And I've even had a conversation with Arancha, who is a chef here in Madrid. She's a guide with Devour Tour. She leads our online cooking classes and she's been a massive help in telling me kind of how she makes her cocido. So this is the pot that I have. When it's not that big. Yeah. So I'm both excited and nervous. I'm looking forward to this. The key thing with a cocido are the ingredients, the quality of the ingredients. So we're going to head to the market now, the Anton Martin market to go to the butcher and buy what we need. I'm going to make sure the recipe is down below. I'm going to try and translate things as best as I can so that you're able to follow this along at home outside of Spain. So Yoli, should we go to the market? Are Let's we ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Cocido time. So coming back to the Anton Martin market, it's not our local market anymore, but it's great to come back and see old friends like Jesus over there, the ham guy. This is so exciting. I love buying all these things that I've never bought before and hardly know what they are. <laughs> the key I need to get though is this assaulted spinal column of a pig. Uh -huh. So here's the thing with cocido, it's a dish that was really for poor people. And so all this meat, this massive amount, I mean, this is enough for maybe six people, eight euros 50. And this is all the meat that's going in there. Then obviously there's the vegetables, but really it was during the, I think sort of 17th, 18th century, went from being a dish for poor people to being something that everybody in society started to eat, rich, poor, the whole bit. This is what Arancha told me. There's two types of chickpeas, two denominaciones de origen, two from two parts of Spain, and you've got to choose one is bigger, one is smaller. I went with the bigger because I don't know, and he said that was good. So. Esta viene condimentada y esta no. Ah, esta okay. es un poquito menos picante que esta. Me gusta picante. Piparras are key because you eat them between bites, and they're fresh and spicy, and the heat kind of cuts through the fat. Okay, we have everything. There's a lot of ingredients that goes into this thing, but uh, a lot of wonderful ingredients. Mm -hmm. Let's go home and cook. Okay, back from the market, Yoli is off having drinks with friends, so I left, I left her in the center. But here's the thing, we are not cooking the cocido today because you must prepare the chickpeas, which we bought dried for the flex, 
you must prepare them the day before. You can soak them up to a 24 hours, I believe, but I've, it's now 4.30 in the afternoon. I'm gonna soak them till about 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. when I start cooking tomorrow. I expect the cooking process to take about sort of four or five hours or so. I don't know what's gonna happen to them. I guess they soak up a lot of water. I haven't added any salt or baking soda. I've seen that online. Arancha said don't bother with that stuff, but hey, this is a learning process. I don't know what's gonna happen to these chickpeas. I guess they soak up the water, but I'm excited and we'll see you tomorrow. We'll be back. Okay guys, welcome back. It's day two. The chickpeas have been soaking overnight. Get in there. All right. And Yoli is back with us. Hello, Yoli. Hi. How was your evening last night with your it friends? It was great, so much great. fun. With I you. was, while you were drinking and enjoying <laughs> your time with friends, I was soaking chickpeas. Oh, very nice. good. So the first step is to take a lot of those bones that we bought yesterday from the butcher and boil it to make the broth. This guy, the espinazo, the salted spine of a pig. But you never said those words together. Mm -hmm. What I'm gonna do is the first step is I'm actually gonna boil for five minutes these meats and then I'm gonna empty out the water and clean it out because that's to get rid of the impurities. So that's first step. Okay, so here it is. This is what I'm putting in the pot. The, uh, the knee bone is connected to the, this is the like the shin bone which has the marrow in it, the ham. This is the salted pork belly, the salted pork spine, and this is the fresh pork belly, or tocino, pork fat, I should say, not the belly. And this is the meat, the morcillo, which is like the beef shank, like that really rough stuff. This is a really tough cut of meat, and so you have to boil it for hours to make it edible. No salt, nothing. I'm gonna bring that to the boil, boil it for five minutes, and then I'm gonna swap out the water. Okay, it's starting to boil. It's got a bit of a, it's got a bit of a whiff to it. Yoli, what's that, that word? Of, that smells of cocido already. Really? Yes! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> cocido smell, two minutes in. Cocido excitement already. We have four hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's been boiling for five minutes. Mm -hmm. For me, that's like panceta and that's tocino. Cocido served, it's good, yeah. <laughs> Raw chickpeas with that. Okay, so I've cleaned the pot. Now I'm gonna add the meat back in. I say, I don't really know what I'm doing, so yeah. this cocido could be a complete disaster. <laughs> All right, back on here. No salt. Why? The espinafa, the spinal column is salted. Some of the, the, the fat is salted. Right. So you cook it here and you leave it uncovered is what Arancha told me. And the more scum is gonna come to the top and we're gonna scoop it out as it comes. I think it's time for a glass of wine, Yoli? Yes. So I'm gonna open the, the personality wine. I know that's probably why most of you are watching this video. <laughs> Drink wine while I cook. You're like, oh no, he's not drinking. Never had this. Pura raza española, it says on oh, it. Oh wow, so, I'm almost scared. Almost sounds falajista. <laughs> Who I'm going to become? Full bodied. <laughs> Salud, Yoli. Salud. Salud, my love. Salud. To cocido. To, to a cocido. future full of cocidos, oh, both summer and winter. I can't wait. Weekend cocidos with friends. I feel like I, I'm about to be reborn. Life is about to begin anew. <laughs> So guys, we're about 15 minutes into the boil. I've set the phone, wherever my phone is, mm -hmm. back pocket to an hour. Come in here, Yoli, and just see how the boil is. It's not, it's 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 like a more of a simmer. Anyway, we're gonna go and drink more wine for 45 minutes. See you in a bit. <laughs> so we're about 40 minutes in, and there's a bit of a scum in there. Mmm, yum, so yum. I just wanna make sure that, lid off, keeping an eye on it, and get rid of the scum. Someone just asked on Twitter if I dispose of the scum in scum bags. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this has been boiling for about sort of 40, 45 minutes. And Ancha said to me, 45 minutes to an hour before you add the chickpeas. So I'm gonna empty out these chickpeas and I've also got these piparas here. I just wanna take a moment to mention if you're looking for Spanish ingredients and you live in the States, check out La Tienda. They deliver Spanish produce, ham, cheese, ingredients all throughout the States to your door. Link in the description below. I know they have dried chickpeas from Spain. They also have piparras. These are pickled peppers. When you're eating the cocido, it's such a kind of a fatty dish. The joy of the cocido for me is eating these pickled peppers between bites. So I'll link to all those below. Check them out and let's start figuring out these chickpeas. So what you need for your chickpeas, you don't want to just dump them in there because then you're gonna have to fish them out later. So I bought what's called a net. I've been soaking the chickpeas <laughs> overnight. Yeah. And how do I get them from there into there? Just my hands? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let me do it. It's a team effort, baby. Hey. Ah, this is easy. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> uh oh. Too small. Uh oh. We got the small Maya. 
I hope you don't like uh, chickpeas too much. <laughs> okay, so we tie a knot, not, not too, too tight. tight. It's okay if a few fall out. Boom. There it is. Okay, chickpeas are in. Now that's gonna be another hour before we add more things. Guys, we're gonna add a little water to the cocido, sort of uh, to what's going on over there. What's <laughs> going on? Can it, can it be called a cocido yet or yeah. not? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to call it. It's like the cocido in progress. Do that mejunje? Yeah, mejunje. Mejunje. That's a good word, mejunje. Uh -huh. So, I'm just gonna add a little bit more because, because we have to add the carrots, we have to add the chicken to here, and I just, there's not gonna be enough space. So I'm gonna add the water now, so there's room for those extra ingredients to go in in an hour. So the chickpeas have been going, where's my timer for 45 minutes or so? They need about two hours, I, you know, I don't even know how long the chickpeas need. <laughs> they need forever. They need forever, an hour, because the thing is, I need to put the chicken in next and more vegetables, but if I put that stuff in too early, by the time the chickpeas are done, that, the chicken will have disintegrated. So I'm a little confused because Arancha told me originally don't put the lid on, but the water is disappearing, and this is the broth, so what she's typing in what's up right now. <laughs> I'm drinking. like, do I put the lid on or not? Because I otherwise drinking. have to add water. In real time, we're waiting. Uh, it literally says, typing. Typing. <laughs> it's my Hail Mary. <laughs> Here, we've got the message from Arancha. She does not put the lid on, so the water will evaporate, but she said it's up to you. You can put the lid on or not. If you don't put the lid on and water evaporates, add more water, but make sure it's hot water, even boiling water from the kettle, not cold water, I assume, because that will break the, the boil. Okay, so I just checked the chickpeas. Here's a tip that I'm giving to you and I have just learned the hard way. Uh, the chickpeas are actually done. I thought they were gonna take another hour or so. So I've taken them out, it's very hot. They're good. So normally you would leave the chickpeas in uh, and now, and you would put the chicken in and the vegetables, but I've taken the chickpeas out because I don't want to overcook. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the chicken, which should take about an hour. Maybe it'll take less. And I'm gonna add the carrots and the leek. And the onion. I'm gonna add onion and I'm gonna pierce the onion with three gut with three cloves. Oh. The onions I'm going to peel. This is not an onion, this is a carrot. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Yeah. His color blindness is getting worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna put the chicken, I'm gonna do this chicken first. <laughs> Found it. There you Olé. go. Hey, baby, why don't you put that in the, in the pot? In the chicken. And put the chicken in the pot. Put the pot in the chicken. <laughs> Getting nervous. Gotten thrown off now. Ole, muy bien. In it goes. In it goes. Carrots going in. Now the other thing that I'm particularly excited about is this clothing of the onion. Right. And then stick. The cloves. Well, I'm going to do four because it makes it look like a star. So these are called clavos <laughs> in Spanish, <laughs> which means nails. Mm. Mm, beautiful. Drop that bad boy in there. Okay, next stage, we have our cocido yumminess boiling over there. Now we're gonna cook the cabbage, the potatoes, and the chorizo, and the morcilla, the blood sausage. What is important though is these guys, the chorizo and the morcilla, these are both Asturiano, so they have a love these kind of smoky smell mm. and flavor. You're not gonna ever wanna cook these in with everything else there, because what's gonna happen is all the fat is gonna come out and make your soup, which is the broth, which is the first course, very fatty. So I'm gonna get these ready and then we'll start chopping them up and popping them in, the, in their own pot. So anyway. <laughs> Alright, welcome back. Little update. I've taken out the fat. I'm being warts and all here, guys. All my mistakes, well, mistakes, I don't know if it's a mistake, but you'll see the fat is really ready. Mm. So a little like the chickpeas, I don't want it to start to melt in there. We've got another sort of 20 minutes or so for the chicken to be done. So now I'm gonna put the, the mortilla, the blood sausage, in here. And I'm gonna put the two chorizos. So the thing I need to prepare now is, there's about 10 more minutes for that, those potatoes and the cabbage. But now, once, I, once they're done, I'm gonna take them out and the, the cabbage and the potato, I'm gonna fry it in garlic. And I think something that I need to learn, Yoli, is to taste food while you're cooking more. I'm sort of... Yeah, you always need to be, to stay in touch with the dish that you're making, I think. Masterclass. So... 
Oh, it's very delicious. Yeah, I love it, it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Wonderful. not fatty, which is quite It's good. not fatty. It's not fatty. Tell you what, um, we've done a really good job, or you have done a really good job of um, half and half. getting... Half and half. Fitty, I'll give you fitty. Getting out of the scum. So this is where it gets all a little bit crazy with the cocido. Things are getting ready at sort of different moments. So we've popped the garbanzos and the fat back in just to heat them up. But now the carrots are done, the chicken is done. That's all done. So we're going to dump all the chickpeas, the meat, everything into... Oh, there's the timer. So we're going to take out... Yoli's going to take out all the meat, all the chickpeas, everything, and put it in the bowl. We're going to keep it warm because we need to make the soup with the broth that's in there. Okay, we're going to strain that. We're going to get this. Ah! Ah, it's hot! Uh, okay, I don't know what's happening. Um, okay, we're putting that cabbage in here. I think I overcooked the... No, I haven't overcooked the potatoes, but I'm not going to fry the potatoes because the potatoes are cooked. The blood sausage, meanwhile, I don't think is quite ready yet, so... I'm making the cocido look hard. <laughs> it's actually a very simple dish. Yeah, I mean, it? usually I do a cocido instead of a sandwich for lunch. It's pretty <laughs> much, you know, it's, it's so easy. <laughs> so if you look in here, Yoli, you'll see all this juiciness that came out. Yeah. And what Arancha said is if you want it, you can add a little bit of that back to the broth. And I'm going to keep this going a little longer. I know it's not completely covered, but I think that's okay. It's just going to kind of cook away there. This guy, now I want to do the fideos. So you're going to put these in, and this is going to be our first course. So we just checked the fideos. Fideos need about 11 minutes or so, 11, 12 minutes. So I'm going to take this off because the chorizo and the morcilla is ready. Then, next step, so this is where we're going to fry up that cabbage and the potatoes. Lovely, I love the colors. Yeah. From the paprika, yeah, and the mozzarella and the tomatoes. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, it smells great. We're going to start plating up now. Baby, you're plating up? Yeah. Let's do it. The fun begins. I think I should start taking the chickpeas out. Uh, about yeah, that's good. that. Maybe yeah. I cut half of that. Yeah. Okay, that's the... The morcillo, the, the beef, the shin, yeah. The, the shank. Pork belly. Pork belly. Yummy. Ooh. There we go. Oops. Ooh, there we go. Lovely. The morcilla. Morcilla. And the chorizo. Great tasting. I'm gonna drive this tasting, but Yoli's gonna taste it behind your backs. So. <laughs> the yeah. fideos first. Let's have a look. We've got the the noodles. We've got the broth. Mm, it looks delicious. Mm. Oh my god. Yeah, it's good. You know, huh? because the trap with the broth is it a it's fatty mm -hmm. or two it's thin in flavor. But this is bang on. Oli. Oh my god, that is really good. No salt <laughs> added. Are you pretending? No. <laughs> Did it look like it? <laughs> this fuente, as we say in Spain, of meats and vegetables. You eat your chickpeas either with a bit of tomato sauce or you put a bit of vinegar and olive oil on them. Mm. Mm. Ooh, buttery, buttery, mm. as they should be. Mm. Mm. Oh, sweet. Yum. Soft, but there's a little bit of, little bit of resistance here. All right. Yep. Remember, you got to cut the little bit of the fat with the... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely meat. Room temperature. No, mm. mm. oh, a warm with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that reminds me of lunch at my grandmother's place. You know, it's those kind of, those cheaper cuts of meat that were really, you know, that, we, that people just used to eat, I feel like, a lot more and they fall out of fashion or something. And then they come back again, but... Yeah. Mm. Ooh, look fat. at that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That for me is the beauty of, of the of the cocido when the fat just melts in your mouth. How about the other one? Oh, there you go. You know my friend Sonia, she does little sandwiches mm -hmm. with those. Yeah, really, really good. Great. I mean, if I eat too much fat, I'm probably going to blow my head off or something. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, yum. Oh, my God. <laughs> Cooked in that broth. Mm. <laughs> so the morcilla, because it's... Asturiana, it's smoky, it's very intense. And then so while you're eating, you've also got the potatoes and the cabbage. Mm. 
Oh, lovely. Peppery, garlicky mm. and the cabbage. Guys, I want you to cook cocido this weekend. I want you to get a big Spanish red. I want you to spend hours in the kitchen doing this. <laughs> Send me your photos. Tag me, James Blick Spain. We really want to see them. I'll put a playlist down below to more videos of Yoli and I cooking. And we'll see you in Spain soon. Salud. Salud.